Hello, and welcome to Andy's Cornish Creations. This week I'm going to be making a giraffe out of a piece of hazel. It's a hazel log, and um, it's a piece that I've tried to use before, but it, um, and I saw it were part turned, um, but it weren't quite, uh, the diameter wasn't large enough for the project that I was uh, wanting to do uh, so as you can see this uh, this one was already kind of already part turned <coughs> here I'm uh, marking out for the um, for the body so I'm parting off uh, the top and bottom and a uh, couple of marks in the middle is uh, the first one there is uh, the thickest part of the body and the second one is the, uh, where it gets narrower towards the neck. I'm working here with a 3 8 inch spindle gouge which I like to use on these, these kind of things. You could use a skew or indeed a bowl gouge if you wanted to, but uh, I like the spindle gouge. Here yeah, I'm working it down, making a little area where the neck is thinner. And I keep going down with the parting tool just so I don't lose the um, sort of reference of the uh, height. When I've finished with the um, spindle gouge, it does tend to leave a few sort of uh, tool marks in there, uh, sort of high points and low. And, uh, and I find that if I go over it with the with a, a, an inch skew on its side, using it as a scraper, it uh, it just sort of takes out the peaks and troughs and evens things out. I couldn't use it on this part here that I'm doing uh, because it'd dig in. So I used um, my um, negative rake round nose scraper to do the same thing. Now I'm going over it with, uh, with some sandpaper from uh, uh, 80 grit right down to a 400, and some sanding sealer hair. Here I'm using the skew just to give a, a nice sharp edge to the uh, parting it off. If you go straight in with a parting tool it tends to leave a, a raggedy edge and then the skew leaves a nice sharp clean edge. This is the abrasive paste. Polish off any excess. And then I've got some wood wax 22 just to give it a, a nice shine and a nice finish. And then just buff it up. And that's it. Nice finish. And the last job is just to part it off with the screw and slightly undercutting it so that it sits nicely on the base. And that's the body done. This is going to be the head. And you see it's a, another piece of log, which again is hazel. I 
Again, I'm using the 3 8 inch spindle gouge. Those two marks are just marking where the snout is. Again, parting it, but also using the skew. Keep a nice clean edge. Now I've um, I marked out for the eyes, the horns, and the ears. So there's um, there's six holes in all. Um, so these lines keep the the eyes, ears and the horn uh, parallel and then I want a centre line so that they're nice and e e sort of equidistant from each other because with six holes if they're all a little bit out it starts to look a bit it starts to all look a bit skew if There are the eyes, that's the eye, that's the horn, and that's the ear. And then I will use a compass so that I can make the other mark on the other side of the line so that it's the same distance from the centre and the same with the others. Just keeping everything balanced. And I'm making the marks now because I want to drill it before I actually finish off the head. But the idea that what I tend to do is I tend to get, uh, when I'm drilling out the wood, it tends to uh, lift, lift the surface up a little bit and leaves the edges a bit raggy. And uh, what I'm thinking of, if I if I do the drilling first, and then I do the finish cut and the sanding afterwards, I might uh, should finish it with some nice clean holes. This is a centre punch, which helps to position the drill when I come to um, when I come to drilling the holes. Makes it much easier. They're the holes for the eyes uh, to take the little plastic eyes. And uh, here I'm just using a small drill because I'm going to be going down with a, a larger drill, and uh, and it's easier if you've got a if you uh, do a pilot hole with a small drill and then uh, follow it through with a. Uh, with a larger size. I think they're about five mil holes. But you can make them whatever you like.
turning it. The spindle gouge getting into shape. Using the skew chisel again to get that nice clean edge. And this is a half inch skew chisel, this one. And then a, a round nose scraper, a smaller round nose scraper, just to get rid of those uh, bumps. And you can see there the holes are nice and uh, nice and sharp. Uh, some uh, abrasive paste and then some wax and that's come up nice got the skew chisel, the half inch skew again take the tail stock off and just finish the back of the head with the skew which leaves very little sanding to do And again, a bit of abrasive paste. And then parting it off with a skewer this time to try and uh, keep the cut as clean as possible. Now this is a piece of uh, sapili, and this is to make the uh, the horns of the giraffe. It's about an inch long, and, um, and I'm using the spanner trick again. It's a five mil spanner, so I know that if I uh, if I use that spanner, it'll if the uh, dimensions right for the five mil holes that I've drilled in the head. I know that that's going to fit in nicely. I'll give it a little sand and then some uh, abrasive paste and polish. A little bit of a buff up and then part it off with the half inch skew. Nice and simple. And there we go. Try it in. And there you go. A perfect fit. There's another one of those to make, which I'll make off camera. But this is the um, one of the ears. And this is a piece of oak, this one. I'm just turning it around. With the uh, spindle gouge. Just marking there the length that I need. using the spanner, 5mm spanner, to give me a little mortise or a tenon. That will fit the 5mm hole that I've drilled in the head. With abrasive paste, wax, a little buff up and 
There we go. Party tough with the skew chisel. And again, yeah, fits lovely. So first I put the horns in. and then the little plastic eyes I know, I know, I know the plastic but uh, I've got a bag of them and I, uh, I'm not going to throw them away so I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to use them up <laughs> it'd be nice to make them out of ebony but uh, when you've got them there, it's uh, a shame not to use them. They're a bit of a tight fit these. I could have uh, made the holes slightly bigger and glued them in, but uh, once these are in they won't come out again. Now I use the punch to punch a hole in the uh, neck. And drill a hole. I put a little flat on the bottom of the uh, head just to uh, sit it down nicely onto the neck. And then I used a, I think it was a, uh, um, like a pea stick. For a for a dowel, which just fit nicely. A bit of super glue on the uh, on the dowel, and uh, some activator to make it go off quickly. There it is, and that should hold nicely. Now I'm just creating uh, sort of the illusion of, uh, of, of legs, so it's just a, a little groove, just to give you the idea that, there's, uh, that it's got legs. It was a bit awkward this because uh, I, I couldn't hold it in the vise very well, I didn't want to crush it and press it too much, I've got the softening there but it wouldn't hold very well. So a bit of a tricky job this one. I got there in the end. Yeah, I'm just sanding it down. Then a bit of abrasive paste and some wax. And a bit of a buff up. And there you have it. Okay, so there we have it. This one was a bit of a a bit of a tall order, if you get what I mean. <laughs> Sorry. A giraffe. Um, so, a log turned into a giraffe. Uh, I think it was a bit of um, hazel again. Um, the log, I'd, it was already partly turned round. Uh, I think I'd planned it for another project, but it weren't quite, it hadn't got the, the right diameter. It wasn't quite uh, large enough. So I, uh, I I finished turning it and just put it on one side. Um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, I quite like this one. He's a he's a funny looking character, and uh, and he's a bit different. Yeah, he's a lot taller than the other ones, and uh, but he's still as just as mischievous <laughs> as you can see. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this one. Um, it's not raining outside, as you can probably hear, or not hear. <laughs> it's nice and quiet. The sun's been shining this afternoon here in Cornwall. And um, it's cold, but it's, uh, it's, it's pretty good really. Anyway, my name's Andy Paramore. This is Andy's Cornish Creations. Uh, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. 
and uh, do all the other stuff and if you could leave a comment that'd be great uh, uh, so from me and this little guy I'll see you on the next one bye bye happy birthday Lexi